sana to today's broadcast. My name is John Mwangi. I would like to invite and welcome you to Slice of Today broadcast for today. Before I proceed any further, as always, I'd like to like I'd like to invite you to like, follow, subscribe. Slice of Today in social media platforms. That is Slice of Today in Facebook, YouTube, Telegram, and Twitter. Slice underscore of today in Instagram. At the end of this broadcast, you shall see an invite from my brother for you to be added to Slice of Today WhatsApp group. You can also download Slice of Today app from Google Play Store. Subscribe your email to Slice of Today, WordPress post. As long as it's today, you shall be getting content. Now, it's another privilege, another opportunity for us to hear God's word. The first Monday, if I can say, in the month of June 2021, it's never in vain. Mungu ambaya metuifadhi hadi wakati huu, hako na nguvu ya kutu eka hadi siku ya mwisho. He's able to sustain us and to the very perfect end. Hallelujah. I would like to invite all of you to our broadcast today. We are streaming live. I wanted to know whether I am loud and clear even before we take it any further. Hallelujah. Karibuni sana hasha kini bahusu Mantira bahisi kila mahanti Dalili hananti Ishka kila mahanti In Jesus mighty name Heavenly Father we thank you For yet another week that you have given unto us Another day, another moment for us to hear your word We receive it in faith, we receive it with thanksgiving We receive it with joy And thank you because of your word which is good seed my life, Abba Father, I declare it is good ground. It shall yield. I shall produce 30, 60, and 100 folds. And I make this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. We'll go straight to the word of God. Now we are doing a series that I've entitled the Why series, the Why series. And maybe I'll try to explain it as I'm going on ahead. I would like to pick it up from the Gospel of Matthew. Now this is after, I think there are 400 years of silence, 300 or 400 years of silence. So Prophet, Ma, uh, not Prophet, but uh, Saint Matthew. So he's the one breaking this silence. The Bible starts the New Testament with a narration of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The Bible starts the New Testament, the new dispensation, if I can call it, where grace now starts. The Bible starts the New Testament with a narration of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Now there has to be a significance. Many other times I've mentioned here before, Yakuamba, uh, things that are written in scripture are very intentional. For instance, we have to ask ourselves why the first words in the Bible, in the beginning, God in the beginning God. I was listening to a certain servant of God and he was saying, Yakwamba, it is very important to note that the Bible does not say from the beginning. <laughs> the Bible does not say from the beginning. Like in Inasema, in the beginning God. Now it's, it's very important for us to ask ourselves why these words are the ones which are introducing scriptures to us. The very last words in scriptures. Amen. The book of Revelations. We have to ask ourselves why this. The middle part, uh, the very middle scripture, of course it must be the book of Psalms, we have to ask ourselves, Kwanini iyo iko katikati? Does it have any significance now? The question that we are answering today, which we are actually asking, and we are trying to be inquisitive towards the Holy Spirit for him to teach us, it is why the New Testament actually starts with a narration of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The Bible continues to say, I'll read the entire of it. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez, and Zerah by Tamar. Now something I would like us to capture near Kwamba, it comes to a time where a certain parent had numerous 
children and the bible will only pick one for it to continue narrating his story now we learned that from pastor david in uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, pastor papi piana so this is divine worship ministries thank you holy spirit so the bible narrates i love you in a sema in a chukua will character then it continues now to uh, teach us maybe something that the, the holy spirit wants us to capture so the bible says abraham was the father of isaac now he didn't have many sons so that something can be picked from so that one can be picked so it just proceeds na kutueleza story ya isaac so isaac the father of jacob remember he had two sons and jacob the father of judah and his brothers and judah the father of perez and zerah by tama and perez the father of hezron and hezron the father of ram and ram the father of adminadab and aminadab the father of nashon and nashon the father of salmon salmon the father of boaz by rehab and boaz the father of obed by ruth so there is rehab there is ruth and obed the father of jesse and jesse the father of david the king and david was the father of solomon the, by the wife of uriah four and solomon the father of rehoboam and Rehoboam the father of Abijah and Abijah the father of Asaph and Asaph the father of Jehoshaphat and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram Joram the father of Uziah and Uziah the father of Jotham Jotham the father of Ahaz Ahaz the father of Zechariah Zechariah the father of Manasseh Manasseh the father of Amos Amos the father of Josiah Josiah the father of Jehiniah and his brothers at that time of the deportation to Babylon so the bible continues to narrate and from the deportation to Babylon, Jokonia, the father of Sheltia, Sheltia, the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, the father of Abid, Abiad, and Abiad, the father of Eliakim, Eliakim, the father of Azor, and Azor, the father of Zadok, Zadok, the father of Achim, Achim, the father of Eliud, Eliud, the father of Eleazar, Eleazar, the father of Mathan, Mathan, the father of Jacob, Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. From David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, to the Christ, 14 generations. Praise be to God. Listen to this. It is not usual for lay for women to be captured in genealogies actually this is the only instance in scripture that women are mentioned in genealogies who are mentioned tama there is rehab there is ruth and there is mary tama rehab ruth and mary the question we'd like to ask ourselves and even answer is this why are these ladies mentioned that is the second question which the question which i would like us to ask ourselves even as we are uh, going through this portion of scripture so number one we have asked why does the bible start by narrating the new testament start by narrating the genealogy of jesus christ I love a statement that Pastor T. Mwangi of Life Church International Limuru mentions. And as a manga, it is very important for believers to note Yakwamba, the genealogy of Christ is the last which is recorded in Scripture. It means Jesus broke anything that is related to lineages that is Erenas. King Yambacho Nikibaya, and it is associated with our lineages. Jesus broke it, and that is why it is the only genealogy which it is the last genealogy in the Bible. Number two, we have to ask ourselves, in this last genealogy, what is so significant about it? And we have mentioned there are four ladies who are mentioned in this genealogy. Let's proceed. The Bible narrates of the conception of Jesus through the Holy Spirit to a lady called Mary who was betrothed to Joseph. Now it is interesting to note here, Kwamba, it is Joseph who was in the lineage of Christ, of David. And it was through that lineage that Christ was to be born. Praise be to God. This thing is heavy in my heart. Listen. 
There are people whom our connection with them will mean our prosperity. Why? Because they have a covenant with God. They have a covenant with God that anything and anywhere that they go, they must excel. So by that small virtue, it might be small, like in anybody who crosses paths with them, their lives get to be transformed. Praise be to God. Yakwamba, the only good thing that happened to this lady called Mary, who is a virgin, is that she was betrothed to Joseph. Joseph's error and significance actually ended very early, <laughs> if I can call it so. Because it is believed by scholars that by the time that Christ was a teenager, Joseph had already died. So, number one, there was a very significant role that he played in the life of Christ. There was a very significant role that he played in the life of Christ. Meaning, ya kwamba kuyu Mary, alikuwa barikiwa. Barikiwa kwa nini? She is affiliated with a genealogy that is already blessed. With a lineage that is already blessed. Praise be to God. So you can actually try to trace. There is one of your friends who is the great, great grandson, great, great granddaughter of a very prominent person, maybe in your land, maybe in the nation, maybe in the body of Christ, in any sphere or scope in life. And you will meet Yakwamba by you being affiliated with them. Your life gets significant. Praise be Four ladies are mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus. We have seen Tama. We have seen uh, uh, Rahab. We have seen uh, Ruth. And we have seen Mary. Now it is interesting to note that the first two, actually the first three, <laughs> their life history was not pleasant. If a sober man and a normal man were asked, Angesema majina yao ya sitajo. Why do I say this? For those of us who maybe aren't conversant with their stories, this is it. And Judah, the father of Perez, and Perez by Tama. So Judah was the father-in-law to Tama. He gave Tama his two sons, and they all died. Why? Because they were wicked men. They were wicked sons. So when Judah was supposed to give Tama his third born, alifikiria, we, neza poteza kila mtu kwa ukoo wangu, wacha nifanya hivi ni tamdanganya. And the Bible narrates, long story short, one time she disguises herself as a prostitute and sleeps with her father-in-law. When it is known, ya kwamba she is expectant, the father-in-law, Judah, sends message and asema, huyo lazima awliwe kwa nini, amefanya kitu ambacho, hakikubaliki in our land. And the Bible says, akajitatea very simply, ya kwamba, to whom these items belong, yeye ndiye baba wa hui mtoto ambaye mimi ni nabeba. So basically, long story short, Tama conceived through her father-in-law. The Bible continues to narrate, the second lady who is mentioned in scripture is Rahab. The Bible states, and it is actually one of uh, one of the things that I would like us to look at it analytically. Rahab was a prostitute in Jericho. Rahab received the spies who had come and hid them and she made a deal. Akasema tafadhali mukipatiwa i taifaletu tafadhali mimi spare my life. And the story narrates ya kwamba it came to pass. Now that is from the book of Joshua. Lastly, the third woman whom maybe it is in, it is important for us to ask ourselves to ask ourselves why she is recorded in scripture is Ruth. Remember, Ruth is married to Boaz because of her obedience and loyalty to her mother-in-law Naomi. It is important also to remember Yakwamba. Her life was very bitter, very sorrowful. Her husband died. The father-in-law died and she has nowhere to go. Actually, she has an option. She can go to her native land 
but she purposes ya kwamba mimi nitaenda na my mother in law so we have to ask ourselves ask ourselves why did she move in this manner i would like to read a portion of scripture from the book of romans it is actually one uh, the, the the main uh, scripture that you were reading that informed our last series and i will read from verses 12 she was told the older will serve the younger as it is written jacob i loved but Esau i hated what shall we say then sorry 11 though they are not yet born and have done nothing neither good nor bad in order that god's purpose of election might continue not because of works but because of him who calls she was told the older will serve the younger as it is written jacob i loved but Esau i hated so we have to ask we we were asking ourselves why does the bible make this audacious statement why does god himself say ya kwamba alipenda moja na kachukua mingine kabla hata wajezaliwa and we were looking at it from the life of jacob lessons from jacob ya kwamba his life had to signify why god had favoritism towards him and not his brother i want us to get that very clear ya kwamba before he is born Yes, Mungu amesema kuna mmoja nimependa na yule mwingine mimi sijapenda. So it means yule ambaye amependwa kwa sababu God is all knowing and we cannot prove him wrong. It means that this life of this gentleman who was loved by God because he did absolutely nothing. His life had to have certain significance. He had to have lived his life in a certain way for scripture to actually conclude this. Praise be to God. I hope you are working with me. So this is it. And we picked numerous lessons from that portion of scripture. So these four ladies that are mentioned in scripture is Pokua Mary. The first three. We have looked at their lives. Number one, the, the first, Tama conceives by her father-in-law. Number two, Rahab is a prostitute in the land. Number three, Ruth has a very bitter life. Lakini God, who is good, thought it best that in his lineage for it to encompass such people. I'd like to challenge you, Yakwamba, no matter what you are going through, there is always good that can come out of it. You'll allow me to quote this quote i i used to la, i used to quote it last year when we were doing our live broadcasts in our ministry page yakwamba my friend uh, brother maluki so we used to you remember we used to do lunch hours with him and a few other brothers together with papa anthony wakua and one time he had very poor internet like i said the internet isn't good but god remains to be good praise be to god for even anything and in everything that you're going through Remember, Yakwamba, something good can actually come out of it. When you hold on and don't lose sight, something good, I am convinced in my heart, and scripture has proven, Yakwamba, something good actually comes out of it. God is interested very dearly with our lineages, with our prosperity. You'll allow me to end with this. I can see my phone is almost going off <laughs> and it will be a very big inconvenience. One time my mentor was preaching a series about marriage, courtship, etc. And he made this statement, like I said, the person you'll actually marry, you don't have to think as in Mimi Kiliambacho in Ataka. I remember this. Like I said, the person you'll actually marry, what you need to think, among the things that you need to consider in Yakwamba, she or he will be somebody's in-law. She or he will be somebody's aunt or uncle. What does that mean? It means you need to marry an individual that you will, that somebody will be proud and pleased to call their sister-in-law, their brother-in-law, their cousin, their, their aunt or their uncle. Think about it. So it means that in every decision that you're doing, even in your courtship, you have to consider. Mutakuwa mnamfita jikoni wageni wakikuja ndiyo asiweze kuwaibisha 
Ama it is somebody that will be even very bold to to introduce in front in front of your guest friends na utaogopa ya kwamba atakuaibisha atasema kitu inappropriate ama pengine amevalia vibaya atanena sijui kizungu ama kikamba ama kinuya vibaya or something of that sort lakini ni mtu ambaye hata unaweza muambia speak on behalf of our family hallelujah <laughs> why because your selection reflect generation in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit Shalom until next time.